Looks good to me. We're, we're back here with Mark, Tommy, and uh, he just filled out his release form that uh, uh, we filled out, and uh, he's brought the documents with me. Read this uh, one paragraph right here. Uh, I state for the record. I state for the record that personal knowledge of the facts set forth herein, which I know to be true and correct, except as those matters vary and stated as based upon information and belief, as do those matters, I believe them to be true and correct as well. If called as a witness, I would completely testify with respect therein. Okay, uh, and, and you agree to that? Yes, sir. Okay. Your secret Justice News and uh, City101.com, also with uh, MarylandCourtWatch.com News. It's the uh, 23rd day of January 2011, um, up here in Cecil County, Maryland, with a group of victims of the Cecil County judicial system and uh, bank system, which uh, they're each going to tell their individual stories. Uh, just as a follow-up, this is a follow-up to program 257, where I delivered uh, copies of these request to all the members of the Maryland Judiciary Committee for the Senate and to all of their delegates uh, in the House of Delegates uh, and representatives here in Cecil County on Friday. So I want to let each one of them introduce themselves and then we will move on to separate interviews. But uh, folks, these people have rights under the uh, official Office of the Fifth Victims' Rights Ombudsman in the, uh, the United States Justice Department. And you should, uh, it's under Title 18 U.S.C. 3077, 377-1, Crime Victims' Rights. And uh, A, B, C, on down the list. Every right that they have had for relief has been violated by the courts by the Justice Department employees, by FBI agents, by uh, state governmental agents, which they will name by uh, the Maryland State Attorney Douglas Gansler's office, the U.S. Attorney's office in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, so you are well aware of what he's doing there. So, uh, on a lighter note, uh, let, let's move on to the introductions. And, uh, to my left here. I'm Debbie Willard. Pleasure. I'm married to Douglas Willard. Pleasure to have you, Debbie. And uh, what are you going to be talking about today? I'm going to be contact, uh, talking about the contacts I have made through emails um, of representatives and congressmen and institutions on our issue with Cecil Bank and um, another matter that my husband will speak about. Okay. And? Um, I am Douglas Willard. And uh, I am actually going to describe uh, the situation in Cecil County with regards to illegal gambling and the relationship with uh, illegal gambling and Cecil Bank. Uh, I want to also talk about my meetings face-to-face -face with the Maryland Comptrollers and the agents I dealt with from the Maryland Comptrollers in Annapolis to the face-to-face uh, -face meetings with the Federal Reserve and the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation, and also face-to-face uh, -face meetings with um, investigators from the Department of Labor, Licensing, and Regulation in Baltimore, all having to do with the actions of Cecil County attorneys, federal attorneys, uh, the uh, judicial system permitting the laundering of millions of dollars through Cecil Bank and several other Delaware banks and I want to bring out how this uh, this is being allowed to continue even though it's been brought to light um, to many federal and state agencies. And next. Yeah, I'm Sam Brenna. Uh, I've been dealing with this uh, crooked group of uh, people in our legal system around the county and the state and uh, I've met all of these people because we're all dealing with the same people and uh, we've been working together and we want to 
bring this evidence out to the public and show the pub public documentation. So, uh, we need the people to help get these people busted. Well, we talk to the FBI, IRS, um, Homeland Security, Department of Justice, you name it. Turn well, just to say, just if you want to follow up on the same stories, uh, the, the previous interviews are on secretjustice.com, programs 111 through 114. Uh, sorry, Josie couldn't be here today because of illness, but we're going to go over and uh, do an interview with her later on this afternoon. So, 141. Uh, interview at my shop, 141. Uh, uh, and also, uh, yeah, a follow-up interview at program 141 at superjustice.com. I'm Thomas Armour, and I'm here to talk about the fraud that put on me on my farm. I had to file bankruptcy on account of the fraud they have done. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll be right back and uh, follow this up on the one-in-one -one interviews. And uh, who will go first? You have to lose the glasses, young man. People, people don't trust people with sunglasses. <laughs>